What's going on everybody? Today we're gonna to touch on some stuff that we try to implement here at CFP or our gym regularly. Uh, we're gonna talk about some positional changes that we can make to eliminate back pain that people get from hinging motions, whether that be the deadlift or the kettlebell swing, devil press, any of the CrossFit type movements where we're bending over and we're picking something up. Um, a lot of times we see people that are a little bit more quad dominant or wanna rely on their quads and have a harder time using and activating their posterior for the hinging movements. And we're gonna talk about some things that we can do to make that a little bit easier and take the pressure off your lower back and make our posterior do the work. So one of the main causes that we see giving people lower back issues, whether that feels like their back is doing the work or maybe the next day it's just really sore and tight, is that they're trying to keep their back or their butt underneath them to pick something up. So whether we're kind of squatting down and keeping our butt underneath, that tends to put the pressure point on our lower back instead of our posterior. Sometimes people are doing that because they want, they feel like they're protecting their lower back, and sometimes people are doing it because they're more quad dominant and that feels like the stronger position, doing more of a squat rather than a pull. Most of the time people don't even realize they're doing this, it's just what feels natural or feels like a safer position for them. We try to get people to do instead is the complete opposite, which means we're actually pushing our hips back, loading up our hamstrings, and that's actually taking the pressure off of our lower back. It does seem counterintuitive, but we're protecting it by pushing our hips back and we're making our posterior do the work instead of our lower back. The other thing that contributes to this is our upper back positioning. If my upper back is in a good position, meaning my shoulders are pulled back, that's gonna give me a flat back so that when I hinge backwards, I'm again putting the pressure on my hips, making my posterior do the work and not my lower back. As soon as my upper back breaks, that is when we get the pressure put onto our lower back. So a couple things that we can do when thinking about things like swings or deadlift. Um, we do wanna hinge over, we want our chest facing the ground, and we want our hips getting pushed back. So if I was doing something like a kettlebell swing, when I do this swing, I am pushing my hips back, my chest is coming towards the ground, and I am squeezing my butt to make this happen. I am not squatting down, which would kind of be the opposite, and we do see this often, where people want to squat down and push up with their quads instead of their legs, or instead of their hamstrings. I am stationary, my hips are coming back, my chest is coming down, and from that positioning, there is no pressure on my lower back. My hamstrings will be on fire, my butt's doing the work, and my lower back is protected. The same thing applies for the deadlift meaning that we're pushing our hips back to protect our lower back rather than keep it underneath, which feels sometimes safer, but means our quads are doing the work. When I'm going to pick up a deadlift, the two biggest things I can think about, keeping my shoulders back and pushing my hips back behind me. By doing that, I'm gonna again be loading up my hamstrings, I'm getting my back out of harm's way, and I'm making sure that my posterior is doing the work. So from this position, shoulders are back, hips are back, squeezing my butt to stand up, and from the top, the very first thing that happens, my hips go back again to protect my lower back. We've yeah. seen the same squat type thing happen with the kettlebell swing as we do the deadlift, where people wanna keep their back protected or think that they're keeping it protected by squatting down, using their quads, and then my lower back becomes the hinge point instead of my hips. Same problem arises there, and just the biggest thing you guys can do is push your hips back, that's gonna be sure the right muscle groups are getting used. So a good check for you guys that you are in a good position, or a good indicator, you've got a vertical shin. So anytime my knees are coming in front of the barbell to pick it up, that means I'm gonna be using my quads, and I'm also gonna to have to get around my knee to pick the bar up. If I have vertical shins, I get that by pushing my hips back, and now I've got a straight bar path to pick up the deadlift. So. Kind of like we mentioned before, a lot of people struggle with this because they're more quad dominant than they are hamstring dominant. So what we're gonna do now is Christy's gonna show you some activation things that make you a little bit, that will make you a little bit more comfortable using your posterior, maybe prior to doing any sort of deadlifts, kettlebell swings, that type of lifting. All right guys, so I'm gonna show you three activation drills that I think really help fire your glutes, fire your hamstrings, and prime the hinging motion. So when we get into lifting the barbell or lifting the kettlebell, we are ready to go and we feel really good. A lot of times when things are tight, such as our back or it gets pumped, we think we need to stretch it. But sometimes we need to flush out that pump that we've gotten in our back or just bring some new fresh blood flow and that's what these activation drills are gonna do for you. So the first one is a band pull through. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna hook a band down towards the bottom of the rig 
so six to 12 inches or towards the floor. Then we're just gonna step over the band and take a couple steps out. From here, our weight should be in our middle of our foot, towards the back of our foot. And we're gonna initiate this movement by pushing our glutes towards the post behind us. So what's gonna happen is I'm gonna breathe in as my chest lowers and push my glutes back. And then I'm gonna drive through my heels and squeeze my butt and exhale. If that feels too easy, you can take a step out. So three sets of 10 to 12 reps, just focusing on pushing our hips back and then squeezing our butt. The next drill is another version of a hinge with a band, but this time it's not a pull through. So we're gonna need two bands, a mini band, and then I like to use a little bit of a lighter band resistance. So I use the green for the pull through. I'm gonna use a little bit lighter and a blue for this one. What I'm gonna do is take this mini band and put it just above my knee. From here, I'm gonna step in to the other band. This time, we're gonna hook it right about my hip height on the rig post. Then I'm gonna walk out to where I get just enough tension to where this is wanting to pull me backwards. And I'm gonna think about applying a little bit of pressure from the band, or from my knees into the band. So that way my knees aren't caving, but when I apply this pressure, my glutes immediately start to fire. My weight is in the middle of my foot. I'm gonna think about engaging my midline, keeping everything nice and tight, and just gently letting this band pull my hips towards the rig, and then I'm gonna stand tall and squeeze my butt. You can even put a hand on your belly and a hand on your back, just to push back and stand. Push back and stand. So what we're working on here is not pushing our knees forward and squatting down because then I'm gonna lose my balance, but instead the weight's in the middle towards the back of my foot, my knees are just about over my midfoot, and then I'm gonna think about hinging. So I'm reaching and I should feel a nice good stretch through my hamstrings and glutes, and then I can drive hard by opening my hips and squeezing my butt. The last drill that I really love to do to activate my hamstrings and glutes before I kettlebell swing, deadlift, even squat, just hinging in any form, is gonna be a glute bridge with a band around my knees. We can also take this one step further by making it elevated with a little bit of adduction at the top. So what that's gonna look like is I'm gonna take my feet, I'm gonna start with about 90 degrees, feet are under my hips, and then from here I'm just gonna lift my hips, pull my knees out, knees come in, drop my hips, so lift, Ooh, drop. Having a pumped up back and having back pain is avoidable. And it's something we don't wanna live with. We wanna work through it. We wanna strengthen our hamstrings, strengthen our glutes, work on our movement pattern so we can exercise pain free and we can continue getting stronger using the right muscle groups. Our hamstrings and our glutes together are so much stronger than our lower back. It just might take a couple steps back to improve some movement patterns. And then we're just gonna rock it forwards and take 10 steps forwards because we're using the right muscle groups and we're no longer in pain. So if you guys wanna see more videos like this please drop a comment below definitely give these a go I like to do three sets of 10 to 12 reps for all three exercises make sure you spend some time warming up don't just load the bar with all the heavy weights prime your movement patterns and then you're gonna be amazed at how good you feel when you can use the right muscle groups have a good day and please don't forget to smash that like button if you like this it really does help our channel it helps with the algorithm and make sure to comment below on anything else you guys want to see have a great day I am